In this video, I will show you how to capture errors and rejects in your talent job. Right, as you all know, uh, the error handling or exception handling is one of the best practice and it has to be done right uh, during our de design and development phase itself. Right, it need not be you know, talent or uh, any other ETL tool, even non ETL, uh, Java, front end, uh, whatever it is, it is always you know, good to um, foresee all the possible uh, exceptions and errors and handle it uh, during the early phases of the projects. So, let's get started. So here are some of the scenarios uh, in which you may encounter any errors or you know uh, issues with um, a particular you know functional requirement or maybe due to you know technical um, you know constraints on the database side, right? So the very first thing is the business logic checks. So this is where um, you check for all the functional requirements. So let's say you are dealing with uh, you know city location code, and location code should be at least you know three characters in length. If that is not coming as three characters from source, right, you will have to handle that exception, capture the error message, and keep it for further review and long-term fix, right? So this is one of the uh, scenario. So in the second scenario, you may be, you know, getting bad data from source itself, uh, either the data is null or having some special characters, right? So in that case, you will not be able to insert data into your target. So those could be, uh, you know, one of the scenario. And in um, some some other scenario, you may have like table constraints, right? You cannot insert nulls, or if it is a key column, uh, or um, you know if you have any length issues, length restriction. And let's say you have on the target side, you have a character limit of 20 characters, but in your source, it is coming you know more than 20. Or let's say you have like 100,000 records and after like 50,000 records, they are coming in you know, null data. So in those cases, um, the data will not be committed on the target side. Again, it depends on your commit interval on the target side. But let's say if you have a higher commit interval, so all those data will be lost. And what would happen is uh, next time when you rerun uh, your job, um, you may you know end up having duplicates on the target side. Right, unless you handle uh, type ones, uh, you know, based uh, in a load on the target side. So for various reasons, it's always, um, you know, best practice to uh, force such uh, issues and handle in handle it in your talent job itself. So let's see how this can be done in talent side. So for this demo, I have created a couple of tables here. Um, so the stage customer is my source, and dim customer is my target. Right, and I have got a couple of fields um, to identify what the um, you know customer uh, name is and the location is. So I have uh, sample records created. So let me go ahead and insert one record. Right, so my stage customer has got all the data points. So uh, the data should be fine and the job should run you know fine. So on the talent side, I am reusing one of my you know existing job. Uh, if you want to check. Um, you know this job you can go to my playlist and check out for those videos so basically what I'm doing is I'm taking stage customer as source and dim customer as my uh, target lookup and based on that I am doing um, you know load to the tar target table right which is again a dim customer so let me go ahead and run this job right the job is now succeeded uh, by inserting one record on the target so let's go back and check okay so now whatever was there in the stage table now is copied over to uh, the target right so there are no issues so what I'll do as a next step I will try to insert uh, one customer location as you know um, null okay so my um, okay so before I do that I'll truncate my stage We'll, we'll just treat it as you know the load is happening next day and I'm inserting one bad record right so I have one bad record inserted into the uh, stage customer right the customer location is uh, null and whereas if you check the dim customer see customer location is not nullable 
So what would happen now is uh, the job will fail and the data will not be inserted into uh, our DIM customer, right? The stage table has the data and there is no, um, okay, so there is a, with the, there is a data with the, um, you know, the prior, prior data, which is fine. I'll still go ahead and run the job and there should not be any record uh, with the customer location as null. I'll go ahead and run the job. Okay, see there is an error here, right? So it cannot insert null into this particular field. So if you query this team customer, there is only one record and there is no record that is with customer ID too. So let's say if you have 100,000 records, right? Um, we talked about this few minutes back. Uh, if the last record fails with this um, particular issue and if you have higher commit interval, uh, the data will not be inserted at all. Right, and uh, whenever you correct and you know do it, if you have like lesser um, you know commit interval, and next time when you run it for the committed data, you may end up having duplicates also. So as a next step, what I'm going to do is I will have another uh, table. Uh, so this is where I will capture the original record, okay, customer ID and customer name location. Along with that, I will uh, also have error code and error message so that in case of any null issues or any tr data truncation issues will be captured into this particular field. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, check this stage table again. Okay, so we have a record with customer location as null and uh, on the talent side, what we will do is so on the talent side, uh, what I have added is I have added uh, this reject table as a uh, DB output component. And if you notice, the table name is underscore reject, right? And uh, it will also have a schema called as error code and error message. Okay, so I have included these two um, you know, columns. Uh, you may want to rename however you want. Okay, so in order to capture this, uh, what we're going to do is from the target side, you just do a right click row and then click on rejects and connect to the um, the reject table this is all is required whenever there is an issue on uh, dim customer this particular table um, constraints uh, what will happen is those error records will be um, transferred back to this reject table along with the appropriate uh, error code and uh, error message okay so now that we have a stage table with uh, customer location as null um, uh, let's go ahead and run this particular job and also uh, if you notice the reject table should not have any constraints because if if you have that constraints again uh, it will be you know errored out again um, I think looks like I had some extra columns so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and drop the table and then recreate so what will happen uh, this this option is not required since I had some uh, issue on that uh, table, uh, I had one extra column um, on the database level. Okay, so now if you see um, the reject table is now created, recreated, but for future uh, runs, I would just keep it as default. Okay, so now, now we have a red one record and this was not inserted here, right? And this is now uh, should be copied over to reject table. Okay, yeah, I can see that. See on the main uh, dim customer, there is no uh, entry for custom customer ID two. That customer ID two is errored out, along with uh, the error uh, code as 2300 and error message as you know cannot insert value, not, cannot insert null into this particular column, right? So appropriate error message is captured in the reject table. So likewise, um, you can have uh, any length issues also. So in order to um, you know prove that out, I'll have another uh, record inserted into the stage customer table. Whereas uh, the customer name is now more than 20 characters. And if you notice, uh, team customer, the customer name is limited to 20, whereas I'm passing more than 20. Okay, so now the error message should be something like uh, the value too long. I'll go ahead and run this job. Okay, now if you see 
the reject table has got another um, you know entry for value to lodge for this particular column right so this is how uh, it will handle all types of database or uh, table level you know constraints um, uh, duplicacy or uh, whatever it is and everything will be handled using a target um, you know row rejects right so this is we have connected using rejects right so we will also look at now uh, one of the business um, you know functional requirement so let's say uh, we have I'll go ahead and truncate the stage table okay and now let's say I ha I'll insert one more you know dummy record wherein my location code is less than three characters okay I'll go ahead and insert that and my stage table has having two lettered one so what we will do is we will create another uh, output okay so I think I have already yeah, created it already so I'll show you um, so what I'm doing is I have created another output called um, you know rejects wherein what I'm doing I'm taking all the original columns right and I am defining my own uh, error code and error message here so all the functional requirements error message will go in here so we can handle any number of um, error messages or error code so the condition here is uh, if my customer location uh, length of customer location is greater than one and less than three right so this is the uh, functional requirement so if this uh, condition is met what will happen is the records will be routed to the other table uh, regular um, reject table and for this I will have uh, say the same DB output right is the same db output the same uh, reject table and i will just call it as default insert because we want to keep a history of all the rejects that are happening right so that's why you need to have the default once you have this um, we will have to take this business rejects that is connected to uh, the reject table so what will happen when the customer location length is less than three there would be a record inserted into this particular reject table so let me go ahead and run this okay now let's see see there is one record followed here and if you go ahead and query the reject table see you have this um, you know manually added uh, error code and error uh, message so likewise you can have any number of uh, issues uh, for which you can create uh, and capture error code and corresponding uh, error messages I hope this is clear and uh, helpful for you if you uh, really like this video give me a thumbs up and if you haven't uh, subscribed you can go ahead and uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, keep learning and happy learning thank you